My name is Jim Heath, and I'm the president of the Institute for Systems Biology. I'm also a founder and board member of Pact Pharma, and I'm here today with two Pact Pharma employees, Susan Foy and Steffi Mandel, as well as Tony Rebus, professor at UCLA, who is also a founder and a board member of Pact Pharma. And we're here to talk today about a paper that we just published in Nature called Non-Viral T-Cell Replacement for Personalized Cell Therapy. This paper reports on a new cell-based th therapy for treating solid tumors with a number of technical innovations, which include both non-viral T-cell receptor replacement, as well as personalized design of the cell therapy. So, Tony, this is one of the most complicated therapies I think most of us have ever seen, much less be involved in. Maybe you could unpack it a little bit for us and as simple a way as possible explain what was done. Jim, the the whole purpose of this therapy is to use a natural ability of the immune system to recognize cancer because there's mutations in the cancer that are not present in normal cells. And it turns out that this is the holy grail of any cancer therapy, which is to specifically target the cancer. But the immune system is complicated, and it does it by a set of receptors that recognize mutations that are different in the majority of cancers. And those mutations are presented by different flavors of the immune system, by proteins that are at the most differ different genes that we have in our genome. So we had to, you, you pioneered the generation of new technologies that allowed the efficient capture of these of circulating immune cells that had receptors that recognize cancer, cancer mutations. The other technology that needed to be developed was to insert these immune receptors back into the patient's own immune cells so we can make an army of them. To do that, the regular approach is to make viral vectors, retrovirus or lentiviruses, which were not feasible to be done in at the FDA standards for every single patient. So we had to develop this new approach of CRISPR gene replacement, where in one step we were able to cut out the endogenous T cell receptor and knock in the one that we had pulled from the blood. So we efficiently were able to redirect the immune system of that patient to their own cancer. Awesome. Um, and also, um, I guess I'll ask this, this of Susan. Um, you utilize non-viral T cell receptor replacement as a strategy. In fact, that's in the title of the paper. Um, what does this mean? Yeah, so good question. So uh, traditionally, um, adoptive cell therapy uses viruses or transposons to introduce a gene into a patient's cells. Uh, but this approach takes a long time, and so it doesn't really apply for a personalized approach. So we needed to develop a new technology to rapidly insert a gene into the patient's cells. And so we do this by introducing a T-cell receptor in the form of a plasmid. And we use uh, CRISPR gene editing, which allows us to make precise cuts in the patient's genome, and we can introduce the T-cell receptor into the patient's own cells. And so this allows us to have a truly personalized approach that is um, faster and cheaper than if we were to use viruses for, for the product. Cool. Well, another aspect um, of the paper what, that you report, it's basically taking personalized cell therapy to a whole new level. Um, now, most cell therapies, to my knowledge, are actually personalized. And like CAR T cell therapy, you take cells out of a patient and engineer them and put them back in. Um, but what is different about the PACT approach that um, really takes this personalized notion to, to the next level? So where our process really differs from these other therapies is that we also screen the patient's own cells for a cure to their cancer. We basically take a biopsy from the patient as well as PBMCs to look for the mutation to the patient's own cancer. And then what we do is using a catalog of 64 different HLAs, we create small molecules, uh, the peptide HLA, which can be recognized by a T cell. We create a library of these molecules for each patient. And we fluorescently label and barcode these molecules and incubate them with another sample of the patient's own blood. And so this allows us to identify the T cells, um, just a single T cell from the patient's own blood. 
And once we have that T cell, we identify the genetic code for the T cell receptor. Um, and so we can identify um, many of these from each individual patient, and we select up to three of them to manufacture into a large scale product for the patient. Cool. So Steffi, do you think this approach is general? Could you design a therapy for any patient or their limitations? Um, in theory, yes. But of course, there are some clinical um, limitations to this. Um, for example, if a patient had a lot of prior lines of chemotherapy, their personal T cells may be very weak and beaten up, so to say. Um, those may not be good candidates for this kind of therapy. And um, there may also be a hostile tumor microenvironment that may not be beneficial for this. But we have learned a lot about this during our trial, and um, we can pre-screen the patients better now to avoid trying to enroll those kind of patients in this therapy. Okay, and and your you know one of the major findings in your paper or reportings in your paper is of this trial, which was an early phase trial designed primarily for, for safety. Um, maybe you could summarize a little bit about what you found. Yeah, um, this, this trial, um, we actually dosed 16 patients, and this is a phase one clinical trial, and the primary endpoints were to show um, safety and feasibility, and we have done that successfully. We have shown that um, we can isolate and clone multiple TCRs from the blood that recognize those patient-specific mutations. Um, we have shown that we can use um, our single-step non-viral precision genome engineering to simultaneously knock out the endogenous T TCR and knock in the patient-specific TCR. We've also developed a clinical-grade um, manufacturing process that allows us to engineer T cells with a defined composition of up to three different TCRs. The product has been well tolerated in all patients. It's safe. And it's the first time to our knowledge that we have infused a three TCR product. Most TCR product are one TCR products when they're genetically engineered. And we've also shown um, from all the patients where we had post-infusion um, biopsies that um, our transgenic T cell products trafficked into the patient tumors. And we have some early indication from some patients that it actually resulted in tumor shrinkage. So we're very excited about taking this forward. Yeah, and so speaking of taking it forward, so Tony, what's next? So having made these uh, advances, now we know that we have to do more. And the more is to either insert, insert more genes or modulate more genes in, in these immune cells so they have advantages once we give them to patients. So they can, can expand more and make a bigger army in the body. And they can get into the cancer and not be turned on by the unfriendly environment that's in the cancer. And we do that by either using the CRISPR knockout, we can knock out genes that give exhaustion of T-cells, for example, and we can prevent them from turning themselves off. Or we can put genes that give new functions to the immune cells. For example, we can put an artificial receptor that we can trigger on. And then once we infuse them into the body of patients in the future, we can do like we've done in mouse models, where we can turn on those cells at will. And avoid the need of conditioning chemotherapy because those cells can be given the signal to expand inside the body without having to wipe out the immune system first. Oh, that's an exciting future. I, I look forward to it and I look forward to working on it with you.